Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to give you guys the update to the Lightning Warder Retaliation build. Um, it's been quite a lot of fun leveling this character. It was pretty slow at first, but did pick up quite a bit once we got our uh, four-piece set. So what I'm going to go ahead, to, sorry, what I'm going to go ahead and do now is talk to you guys a little bit about it, and then we're going to do a quick Crucible run from 100 to 150. So the character is not fully geared yet. I'll have a Grim Calc posted for you guys in the comments below, but I want to show you the core of what we're doing. So I'm using a full-on four-piece Dawnbreakers duty, well, Dawnbreakers set. The reason why we use a four-piece is it gives us, if you read there at the bottom, 0.6 seconds recharge to counter-strike, plus two meter target to counter-strike, plus lightning damage to counter-strike, and retaliation damage added to savagery. So this puts our counter strike at a 0 0.4, 0 0.4 second cooldown with six meter AOE, which is our number one way of killing ranged mobs and casters. Um, so we basically don't have to constantly savagery them all the time. So to go over the rundown of what we're doing, now that I'm at end game, it's important for me to scale offensive ability and defensive ability. So I'm going to show you what my stats are currently, and of course we could optimize them much more. This character is not being designed to kill celestial bosses for the veteran Grimdon players. Uh, so I'm at 2100 OA, which goes up quite a bit when we proc our fighting spirit. This is 50% uptime or so, um, should maybe a little bit less. Our defensive ability is 2800 at the moment. Uh, our resistances are all over maximum, so I've got 30 over fire, 55 over cold, 159 over lightning, 21 over poison and acid, 37 over on pierce, 28 over on bleed. Uh, I've got some over on vitality. In fact, while I'm doing this, let me just go ahead, raise the stakes. Let me start on wave 100, actually better, there we go. Start on wave 100 with extra spawn. Okay, so let me keep going on into it. So some other things to explain with the character is we've got Warcry. Warcry is one of my favorite skills because it basically allows us to pull the whole screen in like this. It also disables casting from casters, which is super nice because it forces them to come close to you. So I use level one Blitz for mobility. You can pretty much just see it like that. Most of these are all passive in soldiers, so Menhir's, bull, or Menhir's will is whenever we get low, it procs and heals us to almost full. I wonder why I'm taking so much damage in here. It's strange. Um, <clears throat> Overguard, I just recently got. I didn't get Overguard until pretty much end game where I'm at because when you pop Overguard, if I show you my shield block stats here, you can see I'm 30 block recovery. When I pop Overguard, the damage block goes to 6400 and the block recovery goes to 64%. Okay, um, moving on into it, the main thing you get is Bulwark, which is your uber skill, or whatever you'd like to call it. Pretty much it gives you everything that you would need. It gives you percentage absorption, which is just general damage reduction, it gives you retaliation damage, it gives you a lot of really good things. And here you can see the power now of our Savagery. It doesn't do a crazy amount, but you can see it's doing reliably 100Ks, which is enough to clear caster mobs. That skill's not ready. The actual top end on our lightning retaliation is uh, currently, where's lightning, 349k. Now on top of the five piece dawn or four piece dawn guard, I'm also using a three piece dawn breaker because the three piece bonus gives us lightning retaliation, aether and chaos, and the pieces in general are good. The three pieces that we're weaving in are the helmet, uh, helmet, chest piece, and gloves. So that leaves open a few pieces. The boots I'm currently using Storm Bears, but I think there's ones called Storm Storm Touch Chains or Storm Touch something. They're significantly better, mainly because their proc is much better. The proc on my current boots actually stuns people, which we do not want. The proc on my on the other boots reduces damage, which doesn't stack with Warcry, but it helps for better uptime. Uh, as for my rings, I decided to go for a ring farming strat, and I haven't done it yet, but I was going to farm creeping rings.
Creeping rings are rings you can farm uh, ideally in Ancient Grove. It's the the roguelike slash repeatable like uh, place at Udenbog, or I think Coven's Refuge. As for my metal, there's a couple of metal options. I was farming for an Icric scale. You can see here I've got a bunch of them. Basically, it's an MI and it naturally rolls retaliation damage, armor, health restored to overguard, plus overguard. It's really good. Uh, and I was trying to get it with decent stats of like offensive ability and defensive ability, but unfortunately that wasn't happening. My belt, I've got Storm Touch Chains. My relic is a low level one called Eye of the Storm. It's only for level 60 and it's super, super significant for damage. It's actually like 20% of all of our damage. Uh, and that pretty much covers the character there. So as for components, uh, it's important that you get 100% armor absorption. If you want to see your armor absorption, you can actually hover over your armor and it will tell you how much absorption you have. So I'm sitting at 99% right now. Now, some other things to make a big difference when it comes to damage on this character is Resistance Shred. So you can see currently what my Devotion Tree sort of looks like. Remember, this will be important for you guys. But I ended up respecking back to what I had before, and I went back into Arcane Bomb. Uh, the reason why is it reduces Lightning Res, which is really important since our main source of damage is Lightning Retaliation. But also important, um, when we're fighting a lot of endgame bosses, we have the ability to tank them, we just don't do a crazy amount of damage if they're not melee. So having the Lightning Shred really makes a big difference. The number one most tanky guy I've fought is a guy named, I think it's called Vokleron. Uh, he's the Lightning Nemesis boss. And he's pretty much just super tank. Him and him and Mogdrogan are both Lightning, but Mogdrogan you don't see him here, he's a Celestial. So as for skills that are on my bar, I'm using this leap I got from, uh, it's called Shattering Something. I like the Shield Charge better. It's called Seismic Leap. It's really good for early level because it does percentage of retaliation damage added to attack. So you can get it at like level 15 and it'll basically help you clear casters when you don't have like a real skill to clear with. Uh, this is not really a super friendly leveling build unless you have a little bit of understanding of the game and understand how to level with, with Primal Strike. Primal Strike can carry you pretty much all throughout the whole game until you're ready to go retaliation. Otherwise, there's always like Oathkeeper variants of builds, and Oathkeeper has a lot of built-in, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Built-in retaliation damage added to attack, which is a lifesaver for builds like this. But thankfully, we get that, we just get it through our set bonus. Something else kind of cool is when you get the full set bonus, your Counter-Strike will actually turn blue, which I thought was pretty cool. It's not like a, an orange thing anymore, it's just this blue sort of spin. I will talk a little bit about what I don't like about Retaliation. So, in the number one way to become tanky in Grimdon, at least from my experience, is getting a metric ton of defensive ability, because it will actually prevent monsters from hitting you and prevent them from critting you. But there's a big problem with defensive ability. The problem is that my Counter-Strike has a 0.4 second cooldown, which means I want to be getting hit all the time. Defensive ability literally prevents monsters from hitting me, which means the more defensive ability I stack, the slower I end up clearing. But it makes me stronger towards Celestial bosses. So like if you look at this guy, he'll like never hit me. So I can like never Counter-Strike. That skill's not ready. Right, like he just doesn't hit me. So it's pretty much all just like my savagery hitting him. But it's kind of like the little inconsistencies like that that are kind of making me a little like more bored with the character. Uh, I really liked it. I had a lot of fun for the time I put in. Uh, I just definitely want to try something new because of this inconsistency that I have. So I'm actually working on a Primal Strike Druid next, which is a Arcanist, uh, Arcanist Shaman.
So just to show some other devotion procs that I have, uh, I'm pretty sure... Actually, do I not have anything else? You guys know the defensive ones from the previous video, so... Yeah, it's the only one on attack I have. That skill's not ready. That skill's not ready yet. I would go all the way for you guys, but I don't feel like making this a 40 minute video or however long it's going to take to get to the next crucible spot, so I'm just going to stop here at 120. You guys get the gist. The build can tank has got pretty good retaliation, but it just takes a long time for monsters to actually smack you. Oh, it's double nemesis boss. Nice. So double was it Iron Maiden, Fabius? Who are we fighting? Iron Maiden and Fabius. Okay, yeah, it's both. Nice. I can't do that. Alright, well that's pretty much all I'm going to show you with this. Like I said, the character can very reliably clear up to 150. And you can go 170, but you need buffs for 170. So, I'm not really going to... Like I said, I don't want to make this a long video right now. Let's go see if we found the legendaries though. Probably not. Nope, but that's good enough for me. Take the Iron Maiden, take the MI, Spectral Battle Axe. Ooh. Recipes are always welcome. Alright then, guys. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I'm excited for 3.9. It's coming up in like 10 days or so, so that's, that's super close. But for now, we're probably just going to chill with some Grim Dawn content. Until then, so take care, have a wonderful time. Remember, if you like the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Take care, everybody.